Are we human or are we dancer? This is a question posed in 21st century human thought and it was proposed by um, my god <clears throat> it was proposed by Brandon Flowers um, in 2008 in an auditory form he asked the question are we human or are we now there's the first grammatical confusion that we need to dissolve today namely did he say uh, dancer, which is in dancing, which is the kinesthetic uh, interpretation of this claim, or is he in fact saying that um, asking uh, to be exact, uh, to be exact, uh, that we are dancer, as if um, we uh, humans are something uh, substantially different than our bodies. Uh, now the uh, singer himself proposes that we uh, take the kinesthetic interpretation since that's what the official lyrics uh, say and that's what he meant to say therefore um, we will um, well, follow his line of thinking in that and accept the kinesthetic interpretation now another confusion that we need to dissolve is the problematic disjunction in the claim when we say or in our natural language, uh, it is not apparent whether we mean the exclusive or inclusive form of the connective. Uh, we could mean um, well, that there are some things that are both human and dancer, therefore you can be one of them or you can be both. Or we could take them as alternatives, namely you can be either human or a dancer, but you cannot be both. So they are exclusive uh, categories, so to speak. Now uh, we will follow some Fregean semantics here, uh, devised by Gottlob Frege uh, in the 20th century. He is a Prussian mathematician that we, um, we will make use of today. Uh, now we can start our discussion from the observation that things can be both human and dancer. So in uh, a Fregean logical notation we could uh, translate this natural language claim to a logical language and we could say there exists a uh, thing that has both the proper property of being a dancer and the property of being human and uh, here uh, is, uh, is a depiction through a Venn diagram uh, of the uh, inclusive dis disjunction. Uh, we could even go a step further and suppose that, uh, well, we could say that for everything it is the case that if that thing has the property of being a dancer, uh, it follows that that thing is also a human. Uh, so there we have a uh, uh, implication, namely that if something is a dancer, it has to be human because all dancers are human. We could imagine the set of dancers as a subset of humans, uh, but what we need to have in mind here that, um, well, maybe not all dancers are human, maybe there are uh, aliens or animals or any different sort of beings that dance and are not human, so this is not logically uh, excluded. Therefore, it is perhaps not so uh, appropriate to talk of an implication. Rather, uh, a more sensible uh, interpretation of the claim would be that the or is meant is in its inclusive disjunction form, <laughs> in, its, in its exclusive form, uh, namely that things can be both human and dancer. But they can be dancer and not human, why not, right? There could be aliens that would dance, That sure, why not? Uh, and uh, using a, a Fregean formulation in a uh, ideal logical language, we would state that there exists a thing that is both a dancer and a human, and uh, there exists a thing that is a dancer and non-human. Now, this second part is not... Um, uh, we don't know that, but we can permit it. Uh, we can say that there are aliens that would be dancer, like, why not? But the singer himself uh, says that... Um, well, it, it seems that he implies the exclusive form of the or, uh, mainly that uh, things can either be human or dancer, since that's what he is asking. Are we human or are we dancing? And it seems that those two things are alternatives. And again, in a Frege notation, we would say that it is not the case that there 
a thing exists that would be both a dancer and a human. And in the uh, Venn depiction, we see that there's uh, in fact uh, nothing that would be both in a, a set of humans and a dance, and there's no uh, this thing, whatever it's called. Uh, in other terms, we could say that uh, for everything it is the case that if it's a dancer it is not a human and if it's a human it is not a dancer so we have a total exclusion here uh, the implied thesis of this question is that when you dance you stop being human apparently because those two uh, sets are ex excluded and uh, we could state that as uh, for everything if it dances it uh, is not a human or it ceases to be human and that is really a I mean that's a quite crazy statement to think of it one of the most daring uh, thesis that I've saw in 20th century uh, human thought uh, because really think of how radical this really is to say that when you dance you stop being human as if uh, our humanity is not something uh, that is constant but can be in fact uh, well uh, we can lose that attribute basically there's a space and time when you can stop being human and if that doesn't blow your mind I mean that's a very crazy statement so uh, I think it is really worth to take a look at it and try to understand it what we need to ask ourselves of course is uh, what does it even mean to dance right we need to define the terms in the claim and one of them is dancing. Uh, here we will look at two school of thoughts. One is the essentialism, namely there exists a thing, an H, uh, attribute X, that um, all of the things that we call dance have in common. And then later we will look at functionalism. Essentialism basically starts from a fragrant picture of language where we can imagine our concepts to be like ordered sets. First we have dancing, and then we have a subset of modern dancing, for example, and then a subset of shuffling, and then a subset of doing uh, the running man, you know, you know, the running man. In this sense, this uh, biggest set here is characterized uh, by being uh, the case that everything that is inside of it uh, set has the property uh, X whatever this property is and this is the essence of dancing and yeah here we can see a uh, Venn depiction of uh, how that would look like but in reality uh, this is not really the case uh, well, what we call dance is way more uh, complex and um, you know <laughs> disordered than this simple uh, idealistic picture of language would suppose uh, in practice, we usually um, well, make a distinction between participatory dancing and performative dancing acts. And um, then we have all of those, you know, uh, subsets of, you know, partying or uh, shuffling or playing just dance or playing just dance and then putting it on YouTube or just doing random movements but then you do it to the beat or you know you have a cramp and then you you play it off as you know ha a dance move and yes that is a problem because when once you have things that are so different and so chaotic and you know you see here that the concept of dance is quite fuzzy so to speak uh, it is not really um, apparent that there has to be an essence that would uh, characterize all the instances of dancing. Uh, moreover, we have uh, well, other things that have dance-like qualities but are not, strictly speaking, dancing as, for example, martial arts, gymnastics, cheerleading, figure skating, synchronized swimming, marching, bands, many other forms of athletics and so on. And following this, we could uh, well, accept a uh, Wittgensteinian pluralistic answer to this uh, to this question, namely that all the things that we call dance don't have to have one thing in common, uh, but they are simply um, connected via a complex uh, well, web of family resemblances, a, a concept that you can learn more about here. We could also say that dancing has to do with its function. What characterizes dancing is the function that it uh, 
basically plays. Uh, it can be social or ceremonial or competitive, erotic, martial, sacred and so on. But the pr problem here, of course, is that uh, other things that are not dancing can, uh, you know, fulfill all of those functions. You could have uh, dancing as a kind of, uh, you know, entertainment, but you could also tell jokes or, you know, uh, have a theater play or whatever, um, you know, or erotic uh, function of dance. I mean, it's not like... It's not like you have to dance to... It's not like somebody has to dance for there to be an erotic experience, I think. The second term in this, the second term in, the second term in this claim is, um, there's also a second term in this claim, uh, that of, uh, well, human. Uh, we can also ask ourselves then what it means to be human. That is a question that we have to answer in order to understand this claim. Uh, Plato, for example, um, said that uh, humans are featherless uh, biped uh, animals. Uh, or Aristotle said that we are political animals, but uh, some people are apolitical. Uh, Confucius said that we are beings with innate uh, goodness. Um, no, it's very controversial how we are going to answer this question what humans are so it's far from you know it's far from simple it's it's far it's far from what is the word it's far from it's far from it's far from um it's far from it's far from the question of what is human is far from settled. Yes. Now, the problem with Flowers' thesis is that one, it is too vague because no definition of human nor dancer are given. Uh, that's why some thinkers, for example, Professor Dinkelstein, um, gave a new uh, interpretation of the thesis that would be more... Um, that would be more uh, exact. Uh, Dinkelstein's interpretation is basically that the solution is very simple. We All we have to do is to define human as something that is not dancing, uh, what he calls homo non dancius, the non-dancing man. And uh, this uh, makes us by definition, uh, something that are not uh, dancing. And this in some sense is the most uh, revolutionary idea of the 21st century. It is to revolutionize what it means to be human. And um, in this picture, as we here see here, uh, we are in fact, uh, a human is in fact not a um, dancer, at least as long as we suppose human to mean a non-dancing man. Um, the other term here is dancing and uh, Dinkelstein supposes that what we uh, call dance is what dancing is and so whatever we call dance that's the dance so the meaning of words in this sense is, is, is the meaning of words in this sense is uh, how we use the words I call a thing X and that thing becomes X and um, that's the brilliant uh, Dinkelstein's answer. We are human when we are not dancing and we are dancer when we are dancing. Uh, human here is meant in its special usage uh, as homo non dancius. Um, and it is a subset of homo homo sapiens, which is the, uh, well, us whenever we are not dancing. And uh, yeah, you cannot really, I mean, this, this is a priori, this is what analytical truths are. I mean, yeah, we are human when we are not dancing, uh, in, as in non-dancing non man, and we are dancer when we are dancing. And that is a, I think, indisputable answer. I mean, it's brilliant. It is absolute truth. This is the, this is the Euclidean point of, of 20th century, 21st century philosophy. <laughs> it's brilliant. And yeah, thank you for attention. <laughs> thank you for your attention. <laughs> yes, Dinkelstein. Learn about him. It's a revolutionary. Revolution. It's crazy.